Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolo Tech, and I wanted to go over a few things with iOS betas. There's a few things you should know, uh, hopefully that will answer some of your questions that you've asked me, and some things you should be doing if you're going to participate in iOS betas. Now, you can get the beta one of two ways. If you're not familiar with it, you can get it at developer.com apple.com and that's the developer beta and then you can get it at apple.com slash beta and that's the public beta the two betas are a little bit different the developer betas usually come out a little bit earlier and also require a membership to get those betas the public betas are free but might come out a few hours to a day later in order for them to maybe work out a few bugs or uh, maybe get it to develop to developers more quickly now, what you need to know, first of all, is that it's test software. Now, the first or the last video I did uh, on the public release was 11.2.5. It's running on an 8 plus, and that is the public release software. That software is what Apple considers stable. Uh, it may still have bugs in it, but they consider that stable, and that's released to the public. And then the next one will be iOS 11.3, or at least we think it will be. I have 11.3 Beta 1 running on this device, and what you should know is if you're going to run these betas, it's designed for you to find problems with it. So that's why I always ask what your issues are on Twitter, things like that, because beta software is designed for people developers, public beta testers to find issues. So you might have issues with your phone. It might need to be wiped to get it back to where it was before so that you can actually use it. Most of the time that's not the case, but you need to be prepared to do that if you're going to run beta software. The next thing is Apple collects data off the phone to try and make it better. So maybe you have an app crash, uh, maybe 3D touch isn't working, there it was a little bit slow, uh, maybe you've got all sorts of problems. Well, some of that they can gather from the phone itself. However, most of that they're depending on you for with the feedback app. So let's go ahead and take a look at the feedback app and I'll show you what you really should be doing if you're having an issue. So you wanna open it up and log in. Now, once you're logged in, you'll see this screen and this screen is for you to track what you've submitted and give them feedback. So if you want to submit a problem that you're having, you go to new feedback and you'll see it gives my iPhone and then it gives you all of these options that you can actually send data to Apple about. So it says provide a descriptive title for your feedback. What area are you seeing an issue with? What type of feedback are you reporting? Add an image or video. So those screen recordings that I often get sent of people having bugs, those can also be sent here so that Apple can see this. Now it doesn't matter who it comes from. They just look at it as a whole. I'm sure that I would imagine that they would see what issues come in that are the most similar and then look at those as far as importance goes and work on those first. So it says, please describe the issue and what steps we can take to reproduce it step by step. In which build did you encounter this bug? So for example, how do you actually get to the problem that you're having. So it could be something as simple as you push an app and it crashes. Usually that's going to be the app developer. However, if you go into say settings, go to privacy and all of a sudden the privacy settings crash, you wanna tell them that here clearly. I go to settings, privacy crashes, and then you would put done. When you've submitted all of this information, you submit it. Now, oftentimes you won't hear back from Apple, but they just take that into consideration. So uh, don't really look for feedback from them. This just gives you feedback or gives you the ability to send feedback to them to let them know that there's issues. So it's a very useful app for not just yourself, but also Apple. So be sure to use that if you're going to be on betas. The last thing is, again, just be prepared to have problems with betas. No software is perfect ever, and there's always going to be bugs here and there, some more major than others, and some software is just for security purposes, some software is to introduce major features, and some some is to deal with issues. So in this case, with 11.3, they introduced Animoji and some other things. Uh, so that's some new features, but that doesn't mean those features are working perfectly. So just keep that in mind. And when you're on a beta, just realize that it's beta software, it's going to crash. And even though there's a lot of betas out there sometimes, probably they're addressing bugs that we don't know about. It could be security based bugs. It could be a fix they try and it doesn't work. So they push it on another beta, maybe sick beta six, they find didn't work so good. So they pushed it out with beta seven with a different fix. They hear no complaints and then they push the final out. So that's really how betas work 
overall. There's much more to it, but that's the general idea. So remember, you might have issues and be sure to submit feedback. I think it'd be very helpful and hopefully we can get all these bugs worked out and get a very stable iOS. I just wanted to share that with you and, and hopefully that helps. If you have any other questions or additional things you think everybody else should hear, please paste them in the comments or post them in the comments below. If you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe and like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.